Hello and welcome to another Blender Geometry Nodes tutorial. In this video we're gonna use a Bezier curve to shape a 3D object. Let's jump right in! Here I am in Blender. This is a 3.1 beta. I have prepared a little empty scene here and the uh, first thing we need is of course a, an object that we can work on that we can put our geometry nodes node tree onto and I'm just gonna take a cube because why not okay the cube needs a new geometry nodes modifier which gives us a new geometry nodes node tree awesome so first of all um, I'm not gonna use this cube I'm gonna create my own cube inside of uh, geometry nodes. So create a mesh primitive cube. And with this cube selected, why am I doing this? Because here I can um, set the vertices individually. So the standard of course is just to have two vertices um, for the cube, but I want more on the C axis, maybe 20. So now I have a cube that has a whole bunch of vertices going along this axis here. And that's because I need some detail there to make shapes. Okay, so we want to shape this cube. First of all, I have to move it up a little and we can do that with a transform node. So bring it up on the C one meter. Let's make it bigger and then it's correct. So this will be the default cube, I think with two meters. So here's our cube. Now, of course, I said we want to shape this cube using a Bezier curve. So let's shift A, add a curve. And by default, that curve is down there. So if I hide my cube, it's right here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to rotate on the Y 90 degrees so that it's um, standing up straight like that. Rotate C90 and so if I look at it from the front now This is the curve that we have we can use that to Shape our cube. Maybe I'll bring it over here so that it's not where the cube is. Let me re-enable the cube. Okay so uh, I'm going to apply as a control a apply all transforms so that This is all set to the default on the curve here Okay, now if I go into edit mode, I have two handles, uh, one at the beginning, one at the end. I can move those around and this will be the shape now that I want this cube to be. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we have to set the positions of the vertices. So remember, we have all sorts of vertices going all down here and then we have uh, just four going across like this and we're gonna move those uh, based on this Bezier. Okay, delete that. Okay, so I need to get my Bezier curve in here into the geometry node snow tree. So shift A, uh, I need to get an input, an object info, and I'm just gonna eyedropper in that curve. Can I do that? It's not picking it up. Why isn't it picking it up? Well, let's do that. Let me just type it in here. Busy curve. This is our curve. Okay. So what do I need? I need to figure out how can I get the position of a like of points along this curve. Right now, this curve only has two points: one at the beginning, one at the, one at the end. But there is a node in here in geometry nodes, which is the curve resample curve. We can plug the curve in there and then we can resample this curve to give us more points along the curve. And how many points do we want? Well, basically the same as we uh, how many we have on our cube here. So we have 20 like subdivisions going along the C axis here. Let's just put in a number input um, integer. Let's plug 20 in here, plug that in there and use the same thing along here. So now we not only have 20 divisions basically going along the C here, we also have 20 points going along our curve. Awesome, but um, we need to get the position of those points. 
And in order to do that, we have to convert this curve into a mesh. So uh, mesh to curve, curve to mesh, there it is, curve to mesh. So now we have this shape in a mesh. Uh, so we have vertices and we can get those positions of the vertices. So let's think about what we have to do with those positions. We will have to transform or um, move basically these vertices uh, of the cube. Okay, so first of all, we need a set position node, right? So we're gonna set the position of the vertices of the cube. And we have to plug in new positions here. So what, what do we need to plug in here? We need to get a, well, we have to get the position that we have and then we have to move the X and the Y and keep the C. Okay, so let's do that. We have to combine. So if we are thinking from left, left uh, from right to left now, we have to combine and we have to shift a vector separate. And what do we want? We want the position of uh, these vertices. So you know how uh, geometry nodes works. The geometry here, this input with uh, 80 vertices, which is our cube subdivided on the C, has 80 vertices. We get the position of those 80 vertices by simply connecting this up like this. So these are the 80 positions. And we're gonna keep X and the Y, no, we're gonna keep the C, but we're gonna change the X and the Y, right? So we're gonna do something in between here. Well, let's get some space in here. Um, and the X and the Y is going to be based on the X position of our point here. So we're gonna use the, just the X um, shift, basically, that we have in our curve here to drive the X and the Y over here. So let's see how we do that. All right, so we have to get the X position of the point here along the curve, because that's what we're interested in, this shape that we have when we look at it uh, straight on like this. And how do we do that? We have to capture the X of the position onto this uh, vertex or onto this mesh. So we have to capture an attribute and the attribute that we're capturing is a float onto the point. Uh, we need the position of the separate XYZ. We can just drag and then separate XYZ. And we can take the X. That's what we want to have stored on a new attribute on each of uh, vertex here on the curve. Cool. And now, we need to take this X and add it or multiply it onto our X and Y over here. So first of all, let's do a math, um, let's do utilities math, plug that in here, set it to multiply, and then the same thing down here. And in here now, we need to get this attribute, but, 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 but. Our cube has four vertices for each layer, basically. And over here, we just have one vertex for each layer, right? So what we need to do is we need to transfer um, the attribute that we have here over to our target geometry, which is the cube. So we need a transfer attribute node. Let's just look for it. Transfer the at, nope, that's the wrong one. Transfer attribute, this guy. Transfer attribute, uh, this, is, this will be the source. Um, the attribute, this guy, of course. And then we do float index, right? So if you think of it, um, maybe this is index zero down here, this point, and then this is one, two, three. And over here we have those slices that we have. And we have to transfer this X position 
which is this attribute onto this X position that we can plug in here then. But like I said, we have four on the cube and only one on uh, the, the Bezier curve here. So actually we need to divide this index by four. So we need to divide, math divide, and the number that we divide by four is the index, right? So without this, without this, this is just the index. And if we want to use the index, we just uh, plug the index into a divide, divide it by four, and then we have this. Cool. So now it's already working. Um, let me just assign a material quick. So let's do this in here. We can go to material, set material, and give it some, I don't know, the metallic car paint. And it looks like this. Interesting. Cool. Um, also, maybe we want to shade it smooth. Set shade smooth. Okay. So this is just a little bit of a, to make it look better back there. Okay. Now let's see if it works. If I go into edit mode on my curve here and I rotate this around, yes, it works, but it's like flipped upside down. And what do we do about that? Well, the easiest thing to do here is to just go into edit mode of this curve, go to segments and switch direction. Now look at that. Now our 3D cube, right? So if we look at it this way, and if I move the point on the Bezier on the X, on the X axis, now our cube is following our shape. So if I take all of the points and uh, bring them in, maybe I want to rotate this. Well, let's make a, a vase vase. You can see this works beautiful it doesn't matter how long this uh, curve is because we're taking the index of those uh, points that we're generating along the curve here so this top one is going to be on the top here even if it's down here see doesn't matter uh, all we're interested in is let me undo this is the the x position right so of course we could uh uh, we could subdivide this and then we get another control point in the middle and we can do like this. Now this looks interesting. Of course, you can also go do this. <laughs> well, you get the point. Now we have a, a Bezier curve with all the cool features of a Bezier curve. Like sizing, rotating with R, G to move the point and all that. We can subdivide the curve. It doesn't matter. We're taking this curve. We're resampling it to have the same amount of detail along the C-axis as the cube that we're generating in here. And this is what it looks like. And of course, if we don't want to use a cube, we could also use maybe a cylinder. So let's plug in a mesh primitive cylinder. Let's take this mesh. Now we have to think about this quick. We want uh, how many vertices? Maybe 16 going around the circle. And we want segments to be 20 so that we have this. But down here we're dividing um, our uh, each layer by four, that's for the cube. But now we have 16, right? We have uh, 16 vertices going around the circle, basically on our cylinder. And so we have to divide this down here by 16. And if we want to keep this in sync, we should get a new number in here, plug that in there and plug that in, where is it? down here. So now we take a, a cylinder as our base object. And for some reason, you can see that this is flipped again. So let's 
Let's segment switch direction again, and here we go. If I take this point, I can make, I can shape this to be round now. Now this looks a bit jagged because we only have 16. Let's turn it up to 32 and it works just fine because we're using the same value down here and up here. Awesome. And that's it for this tutorial. As you can see, it's a very simple node tree, but it's also very powerful because you can use all the features that a Bezier curve gives you with the handles, the rotation, scaling and all that to shape another object. As always, you can get the finished blend file from patreon.com slash chrisp. Don't forget to like, subscribe, enable notifications. Thanks for watching. Chris P out.